Hey guys, welcome to Cakewalk Cambridge. I'm Aisha and this is my first video for the channel, first official video. Um, the first one was just a brief introduction. So this video is how I got all eight A stars at my IGCSEs. The first thing I would recommend you to do um, to get your A star is one, make a timetable. So um, what you need to do is once you have your subjects in place, once you have finalized the nine subjects or whatever, seven subjects that you want to do, okay, it's important to sit down and allocate these subjects to specific days or like you can mix and match combinations, but you know, make a timetable. It's important for you to have enough time to work out an exercise, to sleep, to watch Netflix, to go out, meet your friends, study, do your homework. Um, me saying those two, studying and doing your homework last doesn't mean they're least important, but it's important that you um, are able to spend an adequate amount of time on all of these things. Like focus on your hobbies. So I'll give you an example. Um, at the beginning of grade 10, when I wasn't really organized, um, I used to spend a lot of time with my books and after a point it got really monotonous and tedious. So I, I like writing poetry. So I started writing poetry while I was supposed to be studying. And I do not recommend doing that. It was so, it was like so un, unproductive. And yes, the poems did come out beautifully, but um, it's always better if you have like an allocated amount of time set to study and then you do the rest. Like you keep the rest for your own hobbies and like personal activities because that'll just make you more efficient and it'll tire you out less. Um, my next video is going to be about how to craft a perfect timetable. So I recommend you watch the next video as well if you want to like follow this first tip, which I highly recommend. My next tip to you is number two, clearing doubts. It sounds extremely cliched, but I promise you, it is super important to clear doubts. Um, so in my school, my teachers were extremely chill. So I could like drop them a text at 10 p.m., 9 a.m., any time of the day, and they'd send back my doubt. So um, with the answer. So like, for example, maths. Maths was a subject that I had to work really hard towards. It was, it's not a subject that comes to me naturally. So I spent a lot of time practicing maths. So um, I used to send my math teacher doubts all the time and she always sent back the working. So I'd say for this, like, you know, clearing your, after you clear your doubts, it's not, you can't just like look at her working of the sum and put your phone down. You probably need to go open your notebook, write down the steps, read it down the sum without her working. And you know, that is clearing a doubt. When you understand what the teacher has sent you back and when you implement it in your own answer. My third piece of advice is work-life balance. Um, now this sounds like, you know, really professional and like kind of like an office term or whatever. Something that applies to high students studying at higher grades or, you know, your parents who are probably in the workforce or whatever. But trust me, it's important to strike a balance between, as I said, working out, watching Netflix, studying, doing your homework. Okay, because after a point, you're going to get really tired, okay? So I knew kids in my class who used to like stay up till midnight, maybe past that studying and get up really early in the morning to study again. But obviously during the day, you're going to get tired, you're going to get bored, you're going to get fed up because it's a strenuous timetable, you know? So obviously you end up getting distracted and then again, you're not efficient while studying, you're not productive. So I'd say it's important to do, you know, your things that are personal to you, your own hobbies, pursue them. My next piece of advice to you is extremely important. It's number four, practicing past papers. Now you've probably heard this all over, it's probably all over the internet. Um, your parents have told you that, your teachers have told you that. Okay, but um, I have to tell you that practicing past papers are extremely important. Like um, it can't be reiterated enough. So what you need to know about past papers is that you don't have to mark up mark schemes. Okay, but you should be able to know for what, what point will fetch you what mark, okay? And practicing past papers is also about familiarizing yourself with the kind of questions being asked by the board and the kind of answers that you are expected to write. Um, my next piece of advice to you is read learner guides and the syllabus. Okay, before I get into the learner guide and syllabus part, I just want to let you know 
if you're going to approach external help for your ITCSEs like a tuition, etc., it's not bad at all. Maybe you need that extra supervision or help, which is fine. But ensure you go to someone who knows IGCSE, who knows the pattern, who knows what it expects from you as a student, and who knows how to teach you, you know, how to break down the question, how to deconstruct keywords, and you know, those kind of things. Because if you go to a teacher who teaches the same portion but from a different board, your your answering style may be different. And you know, it's not a problem, but it just makes it harder for you to like get your marks because um, the teachers expect a certain standard from you and a certain way that you're supposed to be writing the answer, you know? So if you go to someone who's well-versed for teaching the board, it's always going to like, it's going to make your work much easier, okay? You're not going to have to like work harder on your style of writing because it should come naturally to you when you've been practicing that kind of style, okay? Anyways, making reading learner guides and the syllabus. So I had a physics teacher in school who used to keep telling me to look at the syllabus and, you know, take off whatever I've understood or learned. And I never really understood how it was going to help me and I never really looked at it until a few months before my mock exams or in India as we call them, prelims. So a few months before my prelims, I opened the syllabus for um, IG's bio and I realized the syllabus explicitly states what they expect you to know and what you should be able to like answer or state or explain or describe, which is extremely important for a student to know because you can study accordingly. You don't waste time learning points or like trying to make notes about things that you're not expected to know or things that are not in your syllabus. Yes, it's amazing if you want to have that extra knowledge and, you know, um, broaden the, the horizons of your perspective towards a subject or whatever. But it's also important because if you want that A star ultimately, like if you're going to like focus about getting your grades first, then you should be able to know what to prioritize. Yes, you can always do ex extended research about these extra topics, but it's important for you to know what the board expects you to know and what they're going to ask you potentially. Okay, so I did this for bio. I sat through the syllabus for every chapter and I made notes. Like for every bullet point in the syllabus, I made like a corresponding note in my notebook. I had separate notebooks for FIS and bio, um, economics, Spanish, literature, English, maths. Those were my subjects. And I made speci like notes specific to the syllabus. So based on what the syllabus requires, I made notes. And that always helps. Trust me. Because you're already like, you already have kind of an idea of what you're expected to like write down in your paper. Okay. And the second part of this point is the learner guide. So the learner guide isn't always easily available online. I never found it easily, but I did find the learner guides for a few subjects like English and literature. And those really help me because over there you get examiner comments, candidate response, exemplar um, responses. And you get um, these little points that tell you what you should do, what you should not do. And as a student, it really, really helps you. Uh, my sixth um, piece of advice to you is make notes. I can't stress on how important it is to make notes. Like, I know some kids who did brilliantly in their IGCSEs without making notes. Maybe it's just my like style of learning and studying. But I tell you, making notes is important because it helps you to like, Break down the information, make it concise and succinct. Okay, so the day before your exam, you're just flipping through those notes. Now, I'm going to have another video on how to make notes efficiently. So you should probably go check that out as well. If you want to like get into the rhythm of making um, useful notes that are, you know, not too long in detail and not too short, you know, and lack information. Because I take pride in my note making as a student. So I'd say it's something, it's a skill that I'd like to share with you guys. So go through that video if you want. Um, note making doesn't just involve looking at your textbook and making notes. It also involves um, making running notes during a class. Um, the next piece of advice to you is number seven, your textbook is your Bible. Now this uh, may sound like, this may sound really um, stupid to some kids because IGCSE once again is all about application. But then again, you, then again, you have to have some kind of, um, you have to have a, uh, some kind of material that will guide you, right? And one 
source is your textbook. Your textbook is your guiding light. It's going to tell you what you need to know. It's going to give you all your information. So for chemistry, I think I knew my textbook by heart because I would read it so often and I still like highlight, make notes, make like big arrows and little stars with pieces of information at the top and, you know, do all of those things. Like my textbook, a lot of people didn't understand how to use the textbook, but I just say you need to read your chapters the first time around. You need to be able to like recognize what is important and what is not important based on your syllabus requirements. And then you need to be able to like take notes or highlight those key points and remember them. Uh, my next piece of advice to you is um, watch other people's success stories. Um, it's not something that you have to do. It's something you can do if you have free time and you're actually inclined towards doing it. So as I told you, I watched Unjaded Jail and she really inspired me to like propel myself towards those A stars. Like her story was super cool. And you know, the fact that she was just another one of us, you know, like going to a, like a school, you're studying, you're a normal kid, you're not a celebrity. You're just going there to like learn and you know, you've got your priorities straight. Like, I don't know, I just found it really motivating and inspiring. And so I'd say do the same. And if these videos helped you and you want to watch them again later, if you're getting bored or like you feel you're not or you feel you're not prepared or you feel really dejected after you get poor grades or grades below average, keep these videos highlighted, liked, bookmarked, saved in your playlists so you can watch them again and motivate yourself again. So, yeah, uh, my next piece of advice to you is consistency and days off. One, it's important to be consistent, but two, it's also important to take breaks. Now, these things kind of clash because if you're taking a break, how can you like study in your break because then you're not being consistent? Well, I'd say it's important um, to plan, manage your time, plan a timetable, as I said in point number one. Okay, so um, it's important to be consistent. That is, you study, a even if you want to take a break, like if you have your Christmas vacation, take a five day to 10 day break. Take it. There's absolutely no issue with doing that. But if you if you want to like keep in touch with some subjects like maths, it's you can do maths for like half an hour a day, one hour a day. That's fine. That's called being consistent. But it's also called taking a day off because you're not really doing anything else. So if you keep like a really short period of time for yourself to keep in touch with the subject, that's being consistent and that's also helping you because you're not losing touch. Okay, you don't get rusty as they call it. It's always going to be helpful. So that's what I recommend. And number 10, most teenagers are going to say, um, most teenagers are probably going to laugh at this, especially in this day and age, but number 10, have a decent sleep schedule. Um, I know most of us sleep at 3 a.m., get up at 7 a.m., sleep at 2 a.m., get up at 9 a.m., sleep at 6 a.m., get up at 12 p.m., and all of these things. It's not um, new. I'm aware it happens all over. But I'd say it's important, at least in this grade, like when you're, it's not actually, not only just for your IGCSEs, but in general, um, having a decent sleep schedule will really help clear your mindset and, you know, um, keep you um, focused and alert during the day so you don't get distracted while studying. It's overall more productive. So in 10th grade, I used to sleep at, yeah, you're going to laugh at me. I used to sleep at 10.45 p.m. and get up at um, around 6.30 a.m. Um, I'd say eight hours of sleep is a necessity, okay, always, um, especially when you're like studying for a competitive exam like your ITCSEs. Wow. Um, so I used to get up at 6.30 a.m. and do maths and then get ready for school, okay. So and then by the time it was like 10.30 in the night, I was tired because I was up since like six in the morning. So I'd say it's important to have a good sleep schedule because you're fresh during the day. You don't feel tired and you don't waste waking hours sleeping. Anyways, those were my 10 points for um, the first video, how I got all eight A stars at my IGCSEs. I hope this video helped you. If it did help you, please drop a like and comment. If you have any other further suggestions, if you have questions, you can drop them down in the comments or you can email me. Uh, my email is on the website, on the YouTube channel. And um, yeah, share this video with your friends if you think it's going to help them. Or if you're competitive, don't share it with your friends and save it to your playlist so you can watch them again. And continue to be motivated. And yeah, you've got a few months till your IG CLCs. You've got a few years maybe. Maybe you're like really young.
but prepare yourself for it and trust me you can do it you can get all eight a stars you can get all a stars i'll assure you it's very achievable so i hope this video helped you um please like share and subscribe to my channel and let's get through this together